like the Nelk channel was made in 2010, right? So like I've been personally at this for like, yeah, 11, 12 years. So it's been like a long journey. So I think to like the outside community, people think it's just stupid, but you got to remember like people have been following us for 10 years. Like they've seen we've come from nothing to like building this, this empire. And we're only going to like continue to do that and grow. So I think if you're a holder, there's just so much to come. Like it's just such a new space. Matt, what's good? How we doing, Sam? Oh, chilling, man. Very excited. We got an uh, incredible episode lined up with Nelk Boys, Full Send. This is uh, Kyle and John. Kyle is one of the, the founders of the Nelk Boys, which has become this, honestly, kind of a creator YouTube sensation, right? Their YouTube channel has over 7 million subscribers, uh, over 4 million on Instagram. Uh, they've definitely r- risen to prominence, largely through these clever prank videos. But at the end of the day, these guys are professional community builders and content creators and have a very good read at, at, at just crushing the new media game. But I think what gets really interesting is that they're really pioneering what it means to kind of drop an NFT project as a creator. And I think when we think about verticals um, and how Web3 and NFTs will infiltrate mainstream culture, this whole, this whole group of creators, be it TikTok creators, YouTubers, how they'll leverage this technology to engage their community is going to be a, a massive driving force in mainstream adoption. And with the, the launch of their MetaCard, which brings forth all this incredible utility, almost acted to some extent as a crowdfund in order for them to open up different gyms, potentially hotels, casinos. Right? They, they sold out. They generated just under 25 million dollars in revenue with the release of their MetaCard NFT project. So to be able to have Kyle and, and John break it down was uh, it's free game. So really excited for everybody to listen to this. What stood out to you, Matt? Yeah, look, I mean, we really believe that NFTs are going to fundamentally redefine the creator economy. And we look at it, there's no like, better testing ground for that than, than YouTube. You think about it, like YouTubers for the longest time have been trying to figure out ways to monetize outside of just you know, the streaming revenue that they get through ad, ad spend on ad dollars on, uh, on, on the platform. It's not, it's pennies, you know? it's, it's peanuts compared to you know, their earning potential, right? And so I think it's an, a really interesting case study in a very like, specific community with a very highly engaged fan base, um, taking it, to the IRL, as I said, you know, these in real life events, these gym memberships, these things that are brick and mortar. And while doing so in a way that they're, they're partnering with a lot of like Web3 native uh, collaborators, uh, you know, they'll talk about their collaboration with Alien Friends. That's a leading project in the space. Um, so I think it's a really interesting case study on that front, taking uh, a, a creator's uh, community from Web2 to Web3. Uh, and it might be a really interesting model that other creators will follow uh, for their own communities and their own values and their own, um, you know, ingrained uh, fan bases. So really interesting insights across the board. Loved hearing their, their thoughts on the haters as well. Uh, yeah. What, 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 what more to say? It's a great episode. Yeah, I'm also glad they didn't like prank us live on the air. But uh, I was worried about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was ready. Yeah. Guard, guard was up. Are you? Are we ever really ready though? Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> not, not for a Nuck Boys prank. Those guys got the, the they deep might be cuts, waiting right? back there yeah, for all yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, no, we are in LA. So. <laughs> and if you haven't already, definitely want to encourage you to sign up for our weekly newsletter where we distill everything that's happening in the NFT market into actionable uh, digest of how you can get involved in the space. So to sign up for that, just go to NFT now.com um, so you won't miss a beat without any further ado kyle and john from nelk boys and full send kyle john what's good how are we feeling what's up? what's up boys thanks for having us glad to have you for sure well i think um i mean kind of not, not too far off the really successful launch from you guys i know it's very much like still day one as far as the, the vision of what you guys are building but would love to even take it back a step to day zero like what first piqued your interest into NFTs? Can you trace us uh, kind of through that journey down the rabbit hole? I think John's been into it like a little more, a little longer than I have. Um, I kind of started out like the basic consumer, I guess, or a lot of people that kind of thought it was stupid. You know, and I'm like, what? What the fuck is this? What are these animals that look like they're on Molly? Like, what is the point of all this and stuff? But I think when I really started to understand it, is when I just real it's more the technology that I became fascinated with and like just what an NFT is. And that's like a way to like verify that you own something digitally, you know, like there's no way to fake it. Like it's just a way to verify that you own something. So, and I think just where I think the world's going and how everything's going more and more digital and, you know, 
that's when I became fascinated with it. And I was like, wow, like this shit is here to stay. This isn't just about art. It is about art in some ways, but I feel like everybody, every company is going to eventually utilize the technology of what an NFT is. So that's, that's when I became really obsessed with it. And I just, I literally couldn't stop thinking about it. Yeah. And you know, John, I know you and I go back years in the music industry. Uh, it's so good to see you entering the NFT space as well. What excites you the most about the NFT space and, and Web3, um, especially, you know, compared with where we've been? Yeah. Um, well, I think one of the things with uh, what we did with the Meta card, you know, I've been pulling my hair for like a year now trying to figure out a way for us to get into the space for Full Send, Nelk, or even Happy Dad. One of our ventures or all our ventures get in. And, um, and I remember, I, I believe, I, I could probably even look up the text. I think you even sent me a text January of 2021. It's like, hey, I have did. you ever thought of, <laughs> right? And I remember thinking, I was like, I was like, get involved. And, and, was that, yeah, you, I remember that. I, I think I have the text still, like, you know, and I was like, what is Matt talking about? You know, and, uh, and that was, I think it was January 2021, worst case, February 2021. Maybe I'll screenshot it and post it when this goes live. Um, but, you, you know, ever since then, and yourself, and I have a really good friend of mine who's like an advisor as well, Nick Tomeno, and, you know, very smart people started reaching out to me, uh, you know, about 13 months ago. And, and I was just kind of pulling my hair, trying to figure out what and how do we get into this space without doing what Kyle just mentioned is like dropping just something random and making a quick buck. And, you know, every, and every day, you know, we're in our office in Orange County right now. And every day Kyle walks in here and he's got a different idea of a big venture idea that something big that we're going to do, whether it's more cool merch or our subscription service on fullsend.com or cool more releases of happy dad more flavors more states to stuff that's not out yet whether it's being gyms or physical locations and every day I'm 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 trying to think is like how do we merge these experiences into one how how do they all connect with one another and you know that's when when the meta card idea came to us a few months ago, where, you know, that's when we, I, I'll never forget the moment I, I had to pull over my car. I was on a call with Sam, my brother, Sam and Kyle. And, you know, that's when the idea came. I said, this is it. This is how all our worlds c combine into one is with the meta card. Um, and that's, that's what really got me excited is like, this is a way for us to bring all our ideas together and, and create a deeper relationship with our audience, with our fan base as well. Um, you know, we're always hoping, um, you know, and we're always happy to hear when like a fan buys one, like that's what gets us the most excited. People hit us up all the time, different people, you know, friends of mine, every friend of mine, everyone that, you know, that I know that you guys know that I know has bought one or bought multiple and that's cool. And I, and I appreciate the support that they do, whether it's friends, celebrities, uh, family members, but nothing better than our fans because that's part of the big picture of what we're building here at Full Send Nelk is connecting everyone. So that's that's what gets me the most excited is now knowing and being able to authenticate who actually holds and being able to now connect with them and bring them into these further experiences that we're going to start building here at Nelk Full Send. And I think it's great too, just to see how you really are leaning into creating utility for your community, really coming up with creative ways to build this universe together, right? Give them a sense of, of deeper participation. So could you really kind of like set the stage at a, at a deeper level? Like what exactly is the MetaCard? How does it tie directly to some of the longer term ambitions for Full Send as an overarching brand? So the MetaCard is a 10,000 piece NFT collection that gives you access to things that we're doing physically and digitally. Uh, when I say physically, there's physical stuff that are existing now, uh, such as our merch drops, which you know, if you guys don't don't know, we uh, we do a merch drop every couple of months and our products are only available once at that time. And when they tend to sell out within 12, six to 12 hours. And once they're gone, they're gone. You'd have to go and figure out how to buy it on StockX or somewhere else or steal it from a friend. And, um, you know, so that's one of the things now where w the MetaCard will now give you access to exclusive items and put you first in line. 
So that's like when I say physical, that's one. Um, even though it's more online, that's kind of maybe a little bit of both. Uh, but then there's physical locations uh, that we're starting to go, we're going to start building out pretty soon. The one that I could talk about because we talk about in Discord all the time, so it's not really a secret is Fulson Gyms. Uh, we're going to have by the end of 2022, we're going to have at least two Fulson Gyms, uh, maybe three, maybe five. Uh, but we're at, definitely going to start with two: one in Southern California and one in another city. That's not going to be in the state of California, but we'll be, you know, a state where we have a lot of um, uh, holders. And, um, and, then, and then, you know, then, then, then sky's the limit. You know, we're going to see where it takes us from there. Is it other types of physical locations? Are there lounges? Are there, um, you know, I, I was walking through an airport the other day and I was like, maybe we do a full sense supplement store inside airports. You know, it's like, what dirtier places there out there than an airport? You know, it's like... <laughs> You know, like, why not? We're we're releasing full sense supplements pretty soon from like workout supplements to like overall health and immune system supplements. And, you know, so, so, you know, do you get, you know, if you're a MediCard holder, do you get, you know, a free upgrade to 180 vitamin C capsule versus the 90, you know, uh, it's regular? It's like everything. I feel like everything that we're going to do. Like John said, it's just going to tie back to the MediCard. So there's always going to be some sort of like benefit for the holder. And I think it's definitely very ambitious, like what we're trying to do in terms of like physical locations. And when we say we're going to open up a full send casino in five to 10 years, like people think we're crazy. But I personally really believe that it's possible. I think that with the right partner, um, full send can really be in any space that like, you know, any space that we want, as long as we do it right and do it with the right partner. So I don't see any reason why in five to 10 years, we can't have a full send hotel and casino like the hard rock. And there's obviously maybe there's an exclusive room for holders or only rooms that are available. Like this, there's just so many possibilities. The space is so new. And I feel like with the MediCard, we kind of just, you know, it's like a key to everything that we're going to do. And that's why we really, we really just targeted people that believe in our brand And, you know, people think it's such a quick journey, but like the Nelk channel was made in 2010, right? So like I've been personally at this for like, yeah, 11, 12 years. So it's been like a long journey. So I think to like the outside community, people think it's just stupid, but you got to remember like people have been following us for 10 years. Like they've seen we've come from nothing to like building this, this empire. And we're only going to like continue to do that and grow. So I think if you're a holder, there's just so much to come. Like it's just such a new space. And that's only in the physical world. Yeah. Like it's going to be a key to everything we do in the digital world too, which is, that's just even more endless. Well, today's an example of that. So we just released a uh, collaboration with Alien Friends and mm-hmm. it was whitelisted to only select amount of MediCard holders. And what's crazy is, you know, that's why we were a few minutes late with this and apologize for that, Sam and Matt. But um, yeah, but the, they, the, the, Alien Friends full send collab minted, and they're already selling on OpenSea from 1.7 ETH to 2.5 ETH. So those who got it have already made their money and it decided to sell it on OpenSea. Have uh, already made their money back on what they spent on the MetaCard. You know, so you know, um, and there'll be more cool collaboration projects with um, not just anybody. I get every day someone sending me a random animal saying, hey, whitelist this for MediCard holders. It's going to be only real cool things that we could do um, and take further because now we we just announced the other day on our Instagram um, full send Alien Friends merch collaboration. And now there'll be ties into holders of that. Well, you know, of the, that NFT will have access to exclusive Alien Friends and full send collaboration. Um, and then there will be NFT projects that we create, especially, you know, with some of the products that we've, the brands that we've built here, whether it's Milk Boys, whether it's Happy Dad. So, but again, those are only going to be, mints will be only available for MetaCard holders. Um, so that's one thing that we're doing in the digital space. We're also looking and we're working with, um, you know, I, I could just share this a little bit, is we're working with Sandbox right now on doing some things in the Sandbox with Full Sand and Nelk and figuring out ways that that's going to tie back to MediCard holders and you be first to be able to do what we're doing with the sandbox if you're a holder. And, um, you know, and then on top of that, uh, we're uh, 
something else I'm going to share. I'm sharing. I'm giving you guys all the exclusives. Yeah, right? I love the alpha. This you is know? like me and you yeah. when you were at Billboard. I'm giving you all That's the exclusives. Right. That's right. Is, Let it rip. Um, Metacard.io is going to be a social platform where um, you know the Metacard holders will actually be able to create a profile and communicate on Metacard.io, and they'll have um, you know they'll they'll have a special card. Their card will turn. You know, I can't get into the details of this yet, only because technically it's not done yet. But yeah, something technically happens. I don't want to you know anyone to hold me against this podcast, but. Uh, but yeah, something different could happen to your meta card and then you enter and you come into this invite only social network that we're building. Love that. I love that. And, you know, like, like they said, you know, the old, the old saying like an overnight success is, is, you know, decades in the making. And it's like, you know, it, it's, it's great to see that, that you are thinking in the long term too, about, you know, the, the, how this, how this, you know, how this can kind of build out into the community and, and all that working with, you know, communities like Alien Friends, which has a, you know, a super engaged community. Um, really great what Mason's built there. And um, yeah. he's fire. Like if oh, you man. see, right. we were just looking at the collection because we didn't even see the whole thing. We saw a few pieces, but we were just scrolling down and that guy is like fire. Like his art, he designed some merch yeah. for the collaboration and even just like the animations that he makes for promotion or the graphics he makes for like socials to promote them. The guy's a fucking genius, yeah. man. And yeah. the guy and uh, Justin who... Who also owns only Alien Friends is they're very smart guys, cool yeah. guys too. Cool guys, yeah. I'm actually I'm trying to buy one right now. In real time. Yeah. He's sweeping He's the floor like, over there. <laughs> all the all the shit he did from like the story graphics pr- for promotion and like all the animations he set up. Like, and he actually did some merch too that we're working on releasing with them. Some cool. real, some real life merch. He's just fucking, he's a genius. And the guy, Justin, that also works with Alien Friends is, they're just really smart guys. They're cool. We actually went to the, we took them to the UFC fight in Anaheim and we got fucked up and shit. It was fun. That sounds great. Yeah. Um, no, I, mean, I think it's super smart because, you know, there's awesome opportunities for communities to cross pollinate in this, uh, in this climate. And, uh, you know, that, that's a really great one that's, that's, uh, you know, still has a lot of uh, room to run and momentum and, and areas to grow. So yeah. um, w- one thing I'd also love to hear a bit about, you know, uh, as you kind of like get into the space, you know, there's a lot of learning curves and all that. And um, there are a lot of people who want to enter it, but like, you know, haven't. And, you know, I'm curious to hear too, like, as you kind of set out and you took your time and like and, brought, and made the MediCard project um, happen, like, what were some of the challenges you had to overcome? in like bringing it to market and any like lessons learned for people who are looking to get into the space? Um, well, you know, I, I don't, I don't know if it, if it was a challenge, but it, you know, it's, I, I guess an internal challenge with us was how do we do this right? You know, how do we, um, you know, we, we know we have a target on our backs at all times, right? Like we're Nelk, we're influencers, you know, like, we're YouTubers, we're controversy. So, you know, people are always, you know, lo- you know, we, we always have a target, no matter what we're doing, you know, if it's a podcast and who we're interviewing in the podcast or whatever it is, you know, someone's looking to come after us. And, but that doesn't really, you know, that that's one thing that we're, you know, we, we always think is like, we don't want that to distract us from doing the right thing. And, you know, really thinking through and how do we release this properly? How do we make sure that when we release this, those who really do believe in us, those who really go and spend their hard earned money, their hard earned ETH into grabbing this is like, how do we make this worth their while? And going back to what I was just saying before is, you know, like this alien friends project for us, it was cool. But then I was thinking to myself the other day, is like, we're doing this because it's cool. And we love the Alien Friends project and we got to know the guys and they were cool. And, you know, it's a cool underground project. And it also supports them because to us, they're still smaller compared to, you know, some of these other projects that have reached out to us. But then like, then it clicks. It's like, you know, and Kyle and I were talking about this is, I was like, you know, I was thinking, because I asked him, I was like, why are people selling? You know, why, why would this, you know, the Alien Friends, Folson just, you know, minted. Why are people selling? It's like, dude, people just made money, you know, like our holders who went and, you know, came up with 0.75. Well, e- it was a free mint too. Yeah, it was a free mint. Just so, pay gas. So, I mean, someone just sold one for two ETH and John's like, why'd they sell it for two ETH? I'm like, what, isn't that like 6K roughly? Like, yeah. That's, <laughs> Not, a, that's it, a fucking come up for like yeah. a lot of fans yeah. too, you know? And some people, we obviously chose like a little bit higher of a mint price too. So 
I mean, for someone to just make 6k too on that, and then they still have a Metacard as well. So exactly. Like so pretty the, dope. So that, and so, so to me, it was like, now it's like our fans are making money. Like the guys who went and, you know, d- d- decide, you know, went and, you know, s- saved up to get a meta card. Now they're actually making money. And guys, remember, meta card is three weeks old. You know, like it, it turned to three weeks old yesterday. It's 22 days old as of today, the day that we recorded this podcast. You know, it's so early. You know, I spit out a bunch of ideas. I think I spit out seven or eight different ideas. These are all just ideas that we've come up with recently. Every day, Kyle, like I said before, as Kyle's walking in, we should do this, we should do that. And I'm and I'm thinking, like, all right, how does this tie into this and that? And you know, um, I'll share with you guys something else. Cause again, you know, I've always given the exclusive news to Matt. And now you, Sam, is like, you know, we're working on a new flavor of Happy Dad. And that flavor, we're figuring out how to do this possibly, but you know, we're f- figuring out a way that holders get the first access to this new flavor of happy dad. Of course you have to be 21 and over, but you know, if you're a 21 and over holder of the meta card, we're going to, we're figuring out ways for you to get access to this new flavor of happy dad, you know, and those are things that we're just always tying in our world now evolves around this, you know, like this now became a 24 seven job for us and we love it. You know, at times, yeah, we, you know, we need a little bit of sleep, but we love it, you know, and I think one thing I've learned is uh, I think you can never go wrong when you just like listen to the, to your community too, which is kind of cool. Now that I wasn't honestly too big into discord before, but I've grown to love discord and just like, it's such a positive place too. It's, it's like really amazing to me when I started going into discords before we had ours, like I was an alien friends one or in betweeners or doodles. And I was just like, damn, like people are very positive in there. It's pretty cool. So I grew to love that, but I think one thing you can never go wrong with is just listening to the community, I think. And they kind of keep you in check too. It's like, as long as you listen to them, you can't really fuck up. Cause it's like, very true. it's pretty cool to just like read shit and get feedback. Um, yeah. So you're telling me that the, the YouTube comment section isn't a, a positive place. No, people are way more savage. <laughs> yeah. Most savage. Yeah. Um, sure. but I feel like we're, we're blessed in that sense where we don't get like, totally shredded on our YouTube, like other people's channels. I don't even know how they do it sometimes. Like it's just they're yeah. like, like Logan or Jake back in the day, like the hate. So we're pretty always blessed in that sense. But, uh, but yeah. So I'm, I'm curious too. And I mean, if there, there's one thing we know, uh, haters will always hate. So like, what do you have for the critics that claim money? Uh, Metacard is a money grab. Um, I just, um, my new thing now is like, yo, just watch. I mean, it's either going to be a flop or it's going to be huge. But to me, even if the floor price dipped to like 0.25 today, I'd be pissed, but I would be like, yo, we're still going to run it up. Like in a year, two years, three years, four years, five years, like the shit's so new. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of an NFT too, is like at any time, even like random projects, like Gary V said it on our podcast that made me really realize it's like, a project could be worth 0.2, but one thing can just change it too. So I, I would say to the critics, I think we got a lot of criticism for definitely the high mint. Um, and then also, yeah, I think like John said, we have a target on our backs and we're Nelk. People think we just drink and party and do whatever we do all the time. But, and they, I think they saw that we just did a podcast with Gary and just released it, but like, it's not true at all, but could have released an NFT like six months ago. But yeah, I think it's just, uh, it's just more like watch and see kind of thing. I mean, yeah. we think about this shit every day. Like I'll think about this shit in my sleep. Like we would never, ever put a brand on the line that we worked on for 10 years to even make $25 million, to even make $50 million. Yeah. Like yeah. there's no amount of money that would ever make us want to just put our stuff on the line like that. Yeah. By, by the way, on those critics, those critics were criticizing us when the mint wasn't even done yet. Like no one even looked at what we were doing no one asked those people just went you know they they of course you you know we're nelk so you could just use our name in a tweet and get engagement um you know so you know it was more of a clickbait type of tweet because they didn't they no one reached out to us to ask us hey high high uh high mint price what's your plan oh you're building physical gyms with top-notch equipment never mind makes sense you know, no one, you know, but now I think three weeks later, when they see floor price is good, announcement after announcement, very high uh, interaction with me and Kyle and Steve and our whole team in the Discord. We've had, I think, maybe 
15 meetups with fans in three weeks, whether it was going to Buffalo Wild Wings in Orange County and taking 10 different holders to Steve taking dinners in Miami. We took some fans to like a private screening at Jackass too. Some U- UFC in Kansas UFC. City last week. You know, if you were in Kansas City, you probably think you'd never, ever meet Nelk. And all of a sudden, you, you know, two Meet weeks, Nelk and Dana you ringside. Made, yeah. You were right. ringside in Kansas City, Missouri with Nelk and Dana two and a half weeks into Metacard release. You know, so now I don't see any critics, you know, yeah. like now, now I agree I'm, to John's point too. It is like some of the people that make like exposing videos or whatever, like it's a great story mm-hmm. when you can talk about Nelk at the same time too, you know, like if you look at their views when they talk about other people, it doesn't really get much. So I'm sure they're looking for any excuse. Like John said, we have a target on our back, any little slip up, any little thing. They always assume the worst. Like that's what I feel too. Now it's always like, they always just assume the worst. Totally. Before even kind of looking into anything. Yeah. One thousand percent. But it is what it is. That's what it comes but with. But they're gone now, right? Like they already see. I mean, I'm sure they're gonna come back because someone's gonna say, Oh wow, I'm only getting five likes a tweet. Maybe I should say something about milk and increase that to a hundred real quick. <laughs> Let me just pull something out of my ass and say it, you know, and they're going to, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't affect us. We're we're still gonna wake up here and come here and get into Discord. We don't really acknowledge them, we just do and execute our plan. And the beauty of ours too is since this brand's been built for like 10 years, um, the critics, you know, we don't really care. I mean, I don't care about the critics because we already, we're not building a community. We're continuing to build it, but we've already built one. Like there's people that have followed our journey. So they know where we're headed. When I say that we could have a full send gym in every major city across North America, they believe us because they've seen our evolution, but to people that are just coming in and seeing us, and maybe they've watched one video of us fucking up a wine tour. They're like, these guys are just drunk idiots that tried to rinse their fans for money. So we're tar- like, I'm targeting like people that believe in our brand. If you don't believe in our brand or don't understand us or don't believe in our team, I don't even want you to be holding, mm-hmm. you know? So that's why it's like the critics, it is what it is. It honestly motivates me because we've never really had that type of hate. So now to have it, it just like, it really fuels me even more. Cause it's like, there's no way you can lose now. Like you yeah. can't let them be right. Yeah, totally love it. I mean, I think you guys really were super thoughtful around giving your community exactly what they want, being able to enlist them and have them participate in some of the the longer term ambitions of the brand and giving them not only access to really cool things now, but also just being able to really participate in that that long term vision. I'm curious, though, because I think on one side, you see a lot of like, sometimes there's really small communities or artists or creators that have a very high density and proportion of like crypto native fans. Um, and then on the flip side, then you have like massive communities online and creators that have like, where like 1% of their fans might be like crypto native. And I think sometimes like we've even with NFT now, like spoken with artists that are like thinking about NFTs and they, they like hesitate because whenever they say anything about an NFT, it's like, oh my God, you're like killing the environment. Um, can you talk a little bit about your journey of like onboarding and educating your fans to kind of combat that and really onboard your community into your NFT projects? I I think we have a lot of fans in the NFT and crypto space. I mean, I know for a fact we do. So I think a lot of our fans still don't understand NFTs as well. So a lot of the hate came from our fans saying like, oh, you're just selling an NFT. What's an NFT? So we're getting hate from the people as well that don't even understand it. I believe in NFTs like crazy. So you get it from there. But um, I think it's just the people that don't understand NFTs are the people that aren't accepting how digital the world's going. You know, like I just see it. It's a way to to like to flex something like your profile picture. It's just a digital way to verify you own something. So it's like, I feel like, you know, all my boys back home, they don't really understand it either. But I think it's a very new thing that people are just going to kind of watch and slowly learn. It's so new, right? But also do, um, but a good amount of our fans do know, right? Like one thing, 100%. I, one thing I could share is most of Nelk's fan according to the data that we get from YouTube and Instagram and Twitter and snap is we're 18 to 32 year olds, males, you know, mostly in North America, you know? So, you know, like that's like the crypto market. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, my, mine is the North America crypto markets worldwide, but like 18, you know, and up males, um, you know, which, you know, and, and, and the one thing that, you know, that I don't know if Kyle and Steve did this by design, I think they just did it, but 
you know, when they do giveaways and when they say, you know, giving away 5,000 bucks to somebody that comments something or whatever, you know, a lot of the different giveaways that you see that creates engagement is, you know, we've always um, sent that money via Bitcoin. So a lot of our fans were creating Bitcoin and Ethereum wallets in hopes of getting, winning some sort of cash giveaway that we've been doing over the last year. So, you know, a lot of those fans already had were big into crypto. We've learned a lot from our fans. We learn all the time from our fans. And that's why we love our Discord. We spend so much time in our Discord because we learn. But then those who didn't know went and set up Ethereum and Bitcoin wallets in hopes of getting, you know, winning money. And obviously, you know, um, only a very small percentage won, but the others just kept their wallets. Like, all right, what do I do with this now? And, you know, it's almost like they were wallet ready. And I think that's one of the reasons why we sold so fast is because our our fans actually had Ethereum wallets. Absolutely. You know, it, it's interesting too. Like we think about like the creator economy, right? Which, you know, Kyle is a creator, John is a creator yourself, and also someone who has managed and guided creators. Um, you know, you, you, you guys have been on the, on, on the ground, you know, in, in, on it. You know, it, it's interesting. We think about it. It's like in Web two, it was like you had to build a, an audience, for, you know, on these on these centralized platforms like YouTube, you know, like Instagram, um, as a means to the end of monetizing it. Kind of was like a middleman for brands, things like that. These brand deals, et cetera, sponsorship. It, it was about like, all right, but but actually, like you know, the you you weren't sharing as much in the value that you were creating directly on those platforms as like a YouTube was taking or like an Instagram was taking, perhaps. So I'm curious to hear your thoughts too, like in Web3, where it's all about building a community and then being able to directly monetize in like the value that you're creating. Like, how does that kind of, like, how does that change the model for creators like, like you who have really built these big followings on those platforms like YouTube? Yeah. Um, well, one thing that when I look at Web3, the beauty of Web3, I personally think Web3 is the future of building businesses. You know, I think it's it's a the future of, you know, right now, you can sell an NFT and you could um, get like, build a deep, like I mentioned earlier, build a deeper connection with your fans. And, and I'm talking about creators specifically. There's a lot, there's hundreds, thousands of different ways to release an NFT project. But as far as a creator goes, this is the new way of creating a business. Then now you've made, um, You've sold out your project, hopefully, and now you have a bunch of Ethereum where you could start doing different things. You could skip out to the Bahamas if you want, right? And, you know, never come back, you know, which sadly a lot of people are doing. Or you can now do what, you know, what we're doing and you could put those funds in a secure place and start building businesses around it and and rewarding those who helped you get there as well. Going back to the gyms idea, when we do full send gyms, You'll be able to sign up if you're not a member, uh, a holder of our um, NFT, but you're going to pay a monthly fee to be there. But if you are a holder and you held your full send meta card or, you know, whatever, or if you're a creator, whatever you want to call your project and, you know, you've held it for a certain amount of time, you get a free membership. You know, you could walk in for free, you know, and you get one of these mini perks. And I, so to me, this is a business. This is not a, I just sold a JPEG or a, a file for, you know, um, two, three ETH or, you know, whatever it is, you know, for a couple thousand dollars. This is now, now a business. I, I see as Web3 as a business. Now, the difference, you, you know, you could build businesses in Web1 and Web2 as well. But what I love about Web3 is it's so positive. Everyone wants to help everybody. Every day, someone's sending me something about, hey, I just got on this whitelist. You want to get on too, you know? And it's like very different than where we came from, Matt, in the music yeah, industry. Yeah, way where, different. Like, right? I'm, I'm doing this and I'm going to stomp on you. I have this song and I hope it shits on your song and your song flops and no one ever goes to your concert and I hope you are irrelevant, you know? And that's kind of like how Web 2 has really been, not just in the music industry, Instagram. I'm way better than you. I hope your Instagram engagement goes down. I hope no one likes your picture. You know, I hope, you know, where Web3 is different. It's like, let's all help each other. Let's all get there together. You know, uh, if I open up the Discord right now, everyone's going to be excited that I'm in there. And everyone's like, John, we were we were waiting for you to come on. We have ideas for you. You know, it's like everyone wants to help everyone. It's a very Web, cool Web3. space too. Yeah. When I meet Metacard holders in real life, everyone's like entrepreneurial and they're like pitching me stuff. Like they're thinking of ways to grow it 
as well. Like I was playing blackjack in the casino and a, and a holder came up to me and he literally had a whole presentation that I actually want to show you after about how he wants to build an app around MediCard so people can like offer perks to each other. Like it's so new, it's so endless, but it's really cool. I think, I think the only thing stopping it right now is that it's just for the average person, it's very hard to like, you know, even buy crypto or buy an NFT. It's very complicated. Um, but as that gets easier and easier and just as time goes by, I think it, it will be the modern way for, for creators to like, you know, monetize. I love that. I love that. And I mean, when you look at, think of, I mean, we have seen uh, interesting models for monetization for creators uh, emerge and develop recently. I mean, you have like Patreon that's been blowing up. You have like even, I mean, YouTube, Instagram rolling out their paid subscription features. Fast forward five years, do those features on those platforms stand a chance relative to NFTs? You think NFTs and Web3 is very much the, the wave as far as monetization for communities? The only thing I don't understand is like how how they'll how they'll be able to like get a video. Like let's say I'm I'm dropping a new Nelk video or something. Like does that get airdropped to their blockchain? So that's like the one thing that I feel like is not quite y- there yet that I don't quite but we're, understand. We're, we're working on that though. We yeah. also have we have fullsend.com, which is our membership site. Yeah. And we're working on something that hopefully will be done in the next couple of weeks in early March, where um you could actually connect your wallet and come into this whole new world on fullsend.com and get exclusive content. Uh, you know, Nelk videos that may be too edgy for YouTube, you know, uh, Fullsend podcasts too controversial for YouTube. Um, you know, exclusive, you know, Steve will do it right now is in Florida. He has a whole new team that we helped him build. Um, that's only filming content that's going to go on fullsend.com and fullsend.com uh, members, um, you'll be able to connect your wallet and you get that exclusive content. So that could be one. I, but yeah, yeah, that's the way we'll do it that, for sure. That's the, that's the right way to do it. Where I think before when we were also thinking this too, is like, yeah, it's like, you know, we can't airdrop a 27 minute video to 7,200 holders, you know, but we could put on a site and you could connect your wallet and you could come to the site for free, which is what we're building. Yeah. Yeah. That's sick. Love it. And even just from our perspective too, it's like, it's just a better experience. Obviously a lot of the infrastructure is being built and some of that stuff you got to build yourself. Um, but just the fact that community now truly has a sense of ownership and it's not just like burning away money every month towards a subscription is also just gives more power to you. Right? Like gives you an opportunity to give back to your community. Yeah. Well, one thing that I love about the NFT space, you know, in addition to being so positive and like and warm and like collaborative, it's not a zero sum game, you know, um, is how many, many people wear different, like multiple hats in it too. It's like collect creators can be collectors, collectors can be creators, everybody, you know, community builders across the, across the, across the map. And I know you, you two are also, uh, NFT collectors. So would love to hear like, what are the highlights of your NFT collection? Yeah. Well, um, obviously I love board apes. Like I just love everything that they're doing. Um, you know, I, uh, I'd be, you know, I'd be uh, mistaken if I didn't admit that I'm very inspired by the things that they do. So, you know, I think that's one. Um, Alien Friends was another one. It was a smaller one, obviously. Not everyone could afford a board ape. And Alien Friends was one that we really, um, that one was more the art. Like we, you know, I know their their floor price goes up and up and down a lot, but I don't, you know, like, like there, I don't know why, but both Kyle and I have this like emotional attachment to those characters that they've created. So that, you know, that's another one. Um, you know, I, I, uh, you know, I look at some of the more advanced ones, like some of the stuff that's happening sandbox. Um, I love what like Snoop is doing with that. Um, you know, where that's something, uh, that we're looking into more and, you know, not only building something in there, but also like getting more active as collectors, uh, with what's going on in the sandbox. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's different, you know, I, uh, um, Today, uh, it's not out yet, but I could probably talk about it. I won't care. Is Josh Goodwin, um, producer and um, I think nine time Grammy winning um, producer and, and engineer. He like texted me this morning that he's releasing like a collection of like beats that he, um, and he obviously he's worked with biggest names, including things he's worked on every single Justin Bieber song in the last nine years. Um, you know, he's releasing some unreleased stuff, right? Like, and I'm interested. I'm, I think that's really cool, like NFT beats and every, NFT music. Nothing. The direction music's going. I want to start collecting there as well. But 
Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, all different angles, man. And it's like, I think by the time this podcast goes live, uh, you know, there'll be new things, you know, it's just like every day there's something new that's being presented to us and I'm all about it. I love everything except for rug pulls, you know, like, <laughs> you know, you don't want to, you don't want to run into me into an alley, you know, if I'm hearing your rug pulling, you know, it's like those people, but they'll, 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 they'll fade out. You know, it's really easy. You know, it's, it's a lot easier to be blacklisted in this space than it is to be whitelisted, you know? So, Ooh. you know, you know, and I think a lot of people, you know, it's like they're making that mistake and it's barely even day one. Yeah. Fully agreed. Fully agreed. Well, look, you know, I think, I think that's a great note to, to wrap this on. Um, you know, it's been a great conversation, you know, as you said, just three weeks old and already, you know, starting to really make waves, some major partnerships, a lot coming down, down the road, some alpha dropped as well. So I'm sure the next time we chat, there will be even more, even more uh, uh, coming on, coming on down, but wanted to thank you both for joining us today on the NFT Now podcast. Of course. Oh, yeah. Thank, thank you guys. guys. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Likewise. Man, well, that was a fun episode. Those guys are really on top of their game, man. What stood out to you? Yeah, look, I mean, I, I just think that uh, we, we speak a lot about how NFTs are going to redefine the creator economy. It's really cool to have like a leading example of a YouTube native community actually building in the space. Um, you know, they're, they're not without controversy. That's part of the brand. Um, but they're like really relentlessly focused on providing value to their core community. Uh, and uh, doing so through really interesting partnerships, through interesting utility that, that bridges the URL to IRL, um, and doing it with like the devil may care attitude that like kind of defines their brand and, and their community. And in a way, like other outsiders may not understand it, but it seems to me like they're super serving their community. Yeah, for sure. And I think this is just such a quintessential vertical that they're disrupting and leading the charge of. I think all these different creators that have built these massive audiences to date have largely just either monetized through like brand shout outs, or I mean, even Fulson, they've done a good job at creating their own merch, but this gives a, a, a great opportunity to build this sense of shared ownership from their community and the way that they're also using it from a crowdfunding perspective to really build out the next wave and next phase of Fullsend and Nelk um, is crazy. So big shouts to the Nelk boys. Um, really glad they were on the episode. And then also thank you all for, for tuning in. Um, if you haven't already, definitely sign up for the newsletter, nftnow.com. Break down the NFT market into an actual digest so you can get involved. And uh, that's it for this week. We'll be back next week. Until then, we out.